Ciao, ragazzi. Welcome to this uh, special edition of City Ass Sit Down. Frank and I, we're back, but we're not here alone. We have uh, the, the fans have been screaming for this these guys that we yeah. it, had them on for a couple of times now, Frank, uh, but everyone's been asking them for back. And so we're going to oblige, yeah. I think, uh, shouldn't we? Because it's uh, hey, the, the masses want it. The masses are going to get it, right? But let's uh, let's welcome the uh, Leche fan club from the UK once again. Welcome to Will and Zach. Gentlemen, good morning. Good afternoon good morning. for you guys yeah thanks for having us yeah welcome back again will this is your third appearance here on the show we're popping the cherry here for zach so no pressure here this morning uh yeah. but yeah remind remind the listeners uh for those who haven't heard from you in a while uh where your your fan club is based out of please so so we're in uh the uk uh we started off as a as a bit of a joke or yeah a bit of a a, a thing to do kind of to because we all got together to support Lecce and then one of us said, oh, we should start a, an Instagram page. And it just became a bit of a, a bit of a joke to make funny posts and try and make people laugh. And then, yeah, we, we racked up quite a few thousand mem- uh, followers. Um, and then as it, as it's grown and as I've met people that are into, into football, um, I've dragged them along to support to support Lecce. So Zach's a perfect example of somebody when, when I met, he's an Arsenal fan like I am, but as many English football fans don't have an Italian team, um, I indoctrinate them and get them to support Lecce because why not? It's, it's just addictive, right? Absolutely. I, you know, it's uh, the fan club originate. I, you, I mean, it, fan clubs originate for, for a variety of reasons. Something, you know, but in, in most cases here in the U S it's because, <clears throat> there isn't a fan club for that team, you know, in a certain city. Uh, that seems to be the most common answer. But your guys is, if I remember from conversations past, how your fan club got formed is pretty unique. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so my this this starts from when I must have been about, about 11 or 12 years old. Um, and we were playing FIFA, I think it was back then, <clears throat> um, mm-hmm. on the PlayStation. Of course. Uh, maybe an Xbox, I can't remember, but um, yeah, my cousin, my cousin is a Watford fan, um, and Watford are a really small team, well, a, a fairly small team in the UK here, and they play in yellow, and I was a am an Arsenal fan who play in red, so we said, let what team should we be together? Um, we'll play co-op against the computer, or against the PlayStation. So we we said we won't be either of our teams. We'll pick a team that has yellow and red in the in the kit, and after a little bit of looking, there's not that many, and Lecce popped up, so. It's one of those things that kind of just has a bit of a weird story and then it's it's really snowballed since then and i think at the time we we're in syria and then we went down uh, a couple of divisions and so yeah we've been through the mud and supported them through the through the sticky situations and now we're in syria it's easier to it's easier to pinch fans like zach and then all the other guys because uh it's easier to watch syria than it is to watch you know syria b or even syria c um but yeah it's been like a pretty much a 20 year affiliation that I've had with Lecce and then um, Zach's, a, Zach's a newbie but he, he's a, he's as into it as I am and there's, there's quite quite a lot of us now. Mm. So uh, speaking of snowball effect this season Zach last year obviously you guys you know were able to survive coming into this season unsure of how exactly how it was going to happen obviously in our prediction show both Frank and I we unfortunately picked you guys for relegation we watched you guys play and we're like oh we got to change this because these guys are playing well and what we've seen this far this season has been a snowball effect with the club, at least early on, where the team got one, one result and just kept building off it and kept, like a snowball effect. Tell us about how you saw the beginning of the season first, like what your feelings were going into the season, and then as the first couple of games started happening, what your thoughts were if they changed at all? I think it's been it was an incredibly positive start um, to the season, as as we know. Um, I think staying up gave us you know massive momentum. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, it was, you know, we started so well. So after our first win, we were just, it was sort of week by week and we were just gaining that confidence. Um, and yeah, just playing really, really good football. Um, yeah. And like you said, it's the snowball. As soon as you win, you just, you just keep going, keep going and going. Um, we knew that there was going to come to a point where perhaps we did drop off slightly. Um, you know, as we were saying earlier, it's, we've, we're winless now for a fair few um, but you know we're, we're we're creeping back. Last week, or you know when we played Milan, that was, we I thought that was brilliant, brilliant turnaround in that game. Um, unlucky at the end there, um, but 
Should have been yeah. a win. We'll say it as Milanese. It should have been. It should have yeah. won for you guys. I mean, yeah, it, it, you guys it, were robbed. It was a it was a heartbreaking uh, robbery, but you know it is what it is. You know we can take that point and and run with it, and hopefully we uh yeah we pick up the three points tomorrow and uh, and get back on track. So, uh, gentlemen, what is it about playing at Lecce uh, that makes it so difficult for teams? I mean, it's it's. It's a unique location, first and foremost. We know that. Um, but, you know, the home record last year was very good. And this season, uh, three wins, two draws, two defeats. And the defeats were very narrow. What makes it so tough to play there for teams? I think, like you said, because it is a little bit of a unique place. It's right down in the south. And it's a one-team city. So that counts for a lot. So if, you, if you're if you into football um, and you're in the region, you're going to the game. So it makes it a really, like, tribal experience i imagine um i know i've been to a couple of games in italy and in and to Lecce and um i know the fans it's, it's very very different to the uk anyway but um i just maybe it's like the intimidation factor a little bit um there's that togetherness because we are so kind of remote a little standalone team in the south that it is kind of the the siege mentality and when these big teams do come it's a chance for the glitz and the glamour and the cameras to come down and and maybe it just do, does give us an extra one or two percent that we need. Um, I mean, the result last week was like Zach said was a was a was a kick at the end, but we're seeing that as a point gained. Um, and as long as we can stay in games like that, I think at home the atmosphere and the and the fact that the, the atmosphere that the fans generate, I think it can inspire the team when we need them. Yeah, it's uh your team is you know going to the season for uh, for us who don't follow Lecce as close as you guys. We knew about obviously we knew about the manager. It's probably probably why we we pegged you guys uh, for relegation of the prediction show, uh, Diversa. But you had some really standout players that we knew going into the season. So Falcone, obviously a fantastic goalkeeper, um, as well as uh, Nicolas Sansone, a player who just always plays up in the big games. It seems like. But outside of that, there wasn't many players that like we. It was like a a name that was familiar to everybody. But then as the season went on, you started seeing the likes of, you had this front three that, you know, Frank alluded to in the beginning that kind of just emerged. And you got some talented attackers on this team. You got a nice, nice couple of midfielders and defenders. Um, Basquirotto, you know, say what you want about his defending, but this guy looks like a monster at the back. And I heard some jokes this weekend about how, like, uh, he shut down Halan because Halan is scared of the, the big, uh, big Leche defenders. So uh, talk about some of these players that, you seen the season that kind of surprised you in the emergence uh, outside of the big names that go into the season. So I, I mean, we we were very unknown even to to us when we went into the season. We we have bought a lot of obscure players. Um, I know we had Banda last year, but for example, he came from like I think the Israeli league or somewhere like that. Um, Almquist that we've brought, I don't even know what country we found him from. Poland. Um, Poland, yeah, but it wasn't yeah, even it was like, like a, small, a big, very low tier, like a second division team in Poland or very low, low yeah. end first tier. Like, yeah, I, I couldn't, pre- if I can't pronounce the name, I, I don't know. I've never heard of them. <laughs> yeah, that's, the same, that's the same as me. So I do think it gives us that element of surprise to a certain extent, because how do you play? How do you plan for a player that you may never have seen? There might not even be a highlight reel of them on YouTube. Um, but we, I just think everybody's, everybody's put in a shift. Um, so far, um, we obviously sold a few players in the summer and uh, Zach and I were speaking previously and the loss of MTT was, I thought was huge for us because we've gone from having a, a World Cup winner, literally a World Cup winner to um, Baskarotto and um, is it Pongranic, this Croatian. Um, so MTT is a big mm-hmm. loss. Um, but the fact that, we, like you said, we've had narrow defeats, we have stayed in games, we got we got massacred against Napoli, but you can kind of, you plan for that. Um, and then losing by the odd goal here and there. I just think the defence is slightly more stable. I don't know if that is a combination of the midfield in front of them, because I thought we'd struggle defensively. Um, Zach, I don't know if you kind of felt the same. Yeah, absolutely. I think, like like we were saying before, we do have, it feels like a an attacking threat now. Um, you know, we have we have the pace and we've got some, some real class finishers in the team. Um, but it's all, it always is that sort of slight worry with the defence. Um, but like you're saying, you know, only losing by a couple of goals here and there, apart from, you know, the big games, the Napoli's and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we, we've been out of any game, really. And I think last week proved that to a, you know, to a, to a massive, massive point. 
Um, going 2 0 down, sort of quick succession, it was like, oh god, here we go again. But I think that team spirit is 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 back, and it's it's so important because that's why you know we managed to to get the point. We could have got three, but yeah, I, the defense is the uh, is the weaker, but it has been, hasn't it, for the last for the last few years, really, except for you know when Mtiti came, um, and it was he was so solid, so so solid, and you know he was, in my opinion, part of the reason we managed to stay up in the end. Yeah, very good. Um, so yeah. So the players are coming from very unique places in terms of the recruitment of the team. And when you take a look at the first 11, you know, a handful of substitutions, I mean, when you look at what you, what's been assembled here on paper, it's, it's a relatively stable Serie A side, you know, for what might be expected of a club like Lecce. I think Richard and I have learned that in order to be able to compete in this league, certain clubs have to get creative with their recruitment. Um, you know, I mean, if the Milans and the Inters are going for the players that they're going for, then then a club like Lecce is out on those guys. What they could probably hope, you know, in, in the past, it's probably hoping for surplus from the bigger clubs and trying to make it work. You've seen a lot of that happen and not work. But but Lecce's taken it a little bit differently. I mean, Udan coming from from Liga, you got Kristovic, who came over from Dutch 1904, was on loan at Trevena Zvezda. Uh, Banda, you mentioned. Amku is for coming from a, from a club in Poland that none of us could spot on the map. Um, and then, you know, the veteran presence in Sansone. Who gets credit for assembling this team? Uh, because I think that they're very shrewd in how they go about it. And I think it's it's, it's been very creatively put together. Uh, and and all in all, a put it has put together a competitive Lecce side. Yeah, I think our sporting director has a lot to say for that. Um, Pantaleo Corvino. So he's... Um, he's been at Lecce before and he had some stints, at, I think he went to Fiorentina um, and a, a couple of other teams. But he's, I think he's the mastermind behind it. Um, last year, he was there as well. And um, Marco Baroni was our manager, who's now the Verona manager. So I don't think it's much down to the management. I think it is. I think he's the, the puppet master behind the scenes and p- picking gems out of obscure countries for a next to nothing um, if they overperform for us, then maybe a bigger team comes in for them and, and Lecce win by cashing in on that. I think that's the way we're going to survive because I don't think even if we received, you know, let's say we sold a player for 20, 30 million euros, we're probably going to replace them with another 500,000 euro player um, and just just bank the difference. So we're not we're not going to be suddenly rivaling you guys for, for players for sure. I think we're always going to follow that method. Um and just hope that there's three worst teams. That's what I always say. As long as there's three worst teams, <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't mind players leaving Lecce because I understand that we are probably a stepping stone to a lot of these guys. Because a lot of them, if you're coming from Poland or Norway or Denmark, all these places, getting into one of the big five leagues, um, you may have to do it via Lecce and then stand out and then go to a bigger team. So we're, we're not, we're not deluded in that these players are going to stay at us forever. If they overperform, then they're going to want to leave. But that means that we have to be. We have to be cashing cashing in on those players. And good sporting directors are definitely, you know, if you know who they are, they do a very good job of, all right, they've got their guys in-house, but then they've got their short list of three guys at each position, for example, saying these are the guys that we need to scout and take a look at that we have the most realistic chance of recruiting and bringing here if we're able to sell this player or that player. Zach, you had talked about how the, the attack is very, you know, the, the most dangerous part, aspect of your team. Obviously, we all of us know about Nicolas Ansone. Uh, Pontus Onquist kind of surprised us here, and he's kind of really, really emerged, uh, as well as Gabriel uh, Strefezza as well. But I think what's unique about you guys is not many teams in the entire league can boast a one-two combination in striker position. Usually you have a good striker, and then it's a big drop-off to the second striker. It doesn't seem like you guys really have that because, first of all, the we just talked about the sporting director finding Nikola Krasovic from where, 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 Serbia, where, where, he, where he was. Um, uh, great find there. He immediately came on the scene, was proven as a, as a quality striker. And then you got Roberto Piccolo, Piccoli who comes in, and he is equally as good, it seems like, at least from us, from the outside perspective. Nearly had the game winner against Milan uh, in the game uh, the week before in the last match day. Um, so you really got a one-two combination here of guys who are very similar. It seems like from us, you mentioned how teams are always, you know, picking out your best players. It's going to be hard for to keep both these guys now. But talk to us about how it feels to have two strikers that you can kind of swap with one another, and really the drop-off isn't that substantial, at least to us. What are your thoughts, Zach? 
Uh, yeah, completely agree. To be honest, it's a, it's a it's a very nice place to be. Um, you know, some of the biggest clubs in the world they don't have that one two. Um, there is always a, a it seems like a significant drop off. Um, and we've seen it in the you know even in the games this year. Um, you know, making substitutions and, and and us getting like a late equaliser. Um, coming you know coming off the bench and, and and picking up points for us. So yeah, it's it's incredibly incredibly good to have and. Like you said, it is going to be a bit of a shame. It's going to be difficult to keep hold of them, um, and that's hard for you know little old Lecce because we need we need to keep these we need to keep these players and start building a team um, because if we're constantly changing year on year, it just makes it so much more difficult. It's almost feels like at the start of every season we've got to go back to the drawing board and sort of find you know find our starting eleven again, and you know it, it just takes time for players to gel. So yeah, keeping hold of them is 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 as hard as trying to get new people um, for the smaller clubs. Um, so, yeah. So the pulse of the Lecce fan right now, um, sitting in 14th, there's a cluster of teams sitting there around 15, 14, 13 points. You've got some teams above Lecce that you could say are overachieving. Uh, to me, Frozenone is being one of them. Uh, and then you've got some teams beneath them that are underachieving, Sassuolo being one of them. Uh, is survival still really the main main goal here or with this team? Do you feel confident that, like I said, I I, I drank the Kool-Aid and said, yeah, 13th. I like this team. I like how they're put together. Um, is it re- is is that reasonable to 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 see that that being an outcome or is is it still are we still talking survival at this point? I'll let you answer this, Zach, because I'm always the negative one. You are always <laughs> and I'm, probably, I'm probably over. I'm over positive about it, but um, no, I, th- I think it's you know you've got to be optimistic in in, in these situations. Um, survival is always is number one. It is yep. for you know for for clubs like Lecce, um, that has got to be. But there has to come to has to come to a point where you go, okay, no, it's not. We're not going to be seventeenth. You know, we're going to be thirteenth, fourteenth, twelfth. We need to get to a point where we can start talking top 10 and stuff like that. But um, I won't push it. I won't go too far. Um, But yeah, I think right now, obviously, we had a really good start and we were we were talking about Champions League. um, But we got over that pretty quickly. Um, So I think where we are right now, if we get a couple of wins, you know, it's it's quite tight in the table, as you you know, as you said, you know, we're one win away from climbing three or four places. So um, depending on other results, of course. Um, But yeah, survival is always first. And then, yeah, just the higher we are the you know the better so i'd like to see us finishing yeah where we are um 13 five that we we'd love that that'd be fantastic <clears throat> i think what we've seen this season is the teams that came up from SETI b last year are legit you know contenders to stay up uh, we're looking at frozenone and genoa in particular who are just above you in the table uh having a great start to season as well but there's uh, you know i think the difference between you guys and versus like a salernitana verona Cagliari, even empoli is that Frank mentioned it at home. You guys are very impressive. You play in a, a style of football that's attractive. Um, you have this attacking sense that when those when those three top three top four guys and uh, and the attack get going, your team is just wave after wave. It seems like it's almost relentless, and the guys don't get seem to get tired. If they do, you guys got some guys on the bench you can bring on to continue that attack. That is the difference, I think, between what we see between your club and the other clubs. So that gives us hope and optimism to say that you guys are going to survive. But like Frank said, we're here in almost the mid- midway part of the season here, uh, 12 games in, many many games to go. You know, outside of survival, what are some goals that you want to see from this team? Um, and it's a hard, it's a loaded question, but obviously survival is first. But do you have some outside goals and what you want to see either from this team defensively or or what, what in general I, will I go with you? Uh, well, I'm going to just chime in on Zach's point. I'm all about survival. If we survive on the last game of the season by one point or goal difference, that's a success to me. Whether we finish anywhere above that is just a bonus. Um, I think I think in January, it's difficult to do to do much business. We, like, we didn't see much last season in January of players coming in. So I think we've got what we've got now. I don't. I, we may do one or two more signings, but I'd like to see us... Just, I don't know. I'd like to see another midfielder coming in. I just feel like we're a little bit lightweight in the middle of the in the middle of the park. Um, but like you said, I think that we're playing good football, and that can only generate more interest um, in Lecce. Because if you are just winning one nil with scrappy goals, or or you're you're a boring nil nil, yeah, it's a point. But you want to be winning fans along the way, and I think that's why we've been so successful in. Um, creating a bit of a, 
an atmosphere around around the club. Obviously, we've we've jumped into it and and grabbed people's attention, but the the club have to play the right way as well. So, I just think carry on with the attacking players that we've got. Um, the the dramatic comebacks you can't do that forever so i'm i'm a little bit more conservative i i'd rather we won one nil um and we didn't have to do the dramatics but um <laughs> it just does it creates and we see we see lecce popping up on um on sky sports over here like the monday night game i I'm, i think it will be on tv um we see us getting mentioned now on on big um twitter conversations and things like that so um it, yeah it's not great for the heart rate um but I, as long as we're playing well, we're entertaining. Yeah, after survival, let's just let's just entertain the fans. I think. Last one for me, uh, and it just more pertains to Monday's game, uh, traveling to Verona. So while you guys are sitting in 14th, I mean this is a six pointer, uh, so a big game. You have uh, Ramadani suspended. Almquist looks like he's going to be out. Kaba doubtful. Size this matchup for us. Uh, you know that Verona is starting to show some signs of life, but still. A team that I think is a little bit short on talent. Um, yeah, Cyril and Gonja is really good. Uh, dude is a veteran, you know. But uh, how do you see this going down for you guys? Uh, what's going to be key for uh, getting a result uh, out of the Bentagoti? I think scoring first is important. Um, I don't think this will be a, a basketball match. I don't think it'll be four three, one of those sort of games. I think it'll be tight. Um, whenever you play a team that you see as a potential rival to your achievement which is, or your objective, which is obviously for survival. I think the first goal is important. When you play a team like Milan or Juve or Roma, it's it's a bit of a free hit, really. So you're not going into that expecting anything. Um, so you can be a little bit more um, gung-ho. Whereas this one, I think you need to be sensible. You need to keep it tight. If we can take it, you know, if we're drawing after an hour, still give us a a really good chance of coming away just because of what you said we've got guys on the bench who can kind of plug in and go um that don't let up so i think if we're if we're level with 15 20 minutes to go it wouldn't surprise me if we uh, if we could if we could steal it obviously away from home is difficult um but i i'm, I'm cautiously optimistic um but i'll revisit my optimism tomorrow, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my last question is for both of you guys. Uh, Zach, I'll let you go second so you can think about it. Tell us before we, before you guys plug yourselves away, um, your favorite Lecce moment, whether it's this season or in the past. I, I'm just curious. Will, I'll start with you. Gosh. Um, so I do have, luckily for me, I've had quite a lot to pick from. Um, I've been to San Siro to watch us play, um, and I've been to a home game. But I will also... I, I will just say I think the the rel the the promotion game of the season before last when we came up um, because we um, we went down to a, a club in Fulham where there's uh, ex Lecce um, people living living there and own, own a business oh, wow. so um, they invited us they're they're, they're great on on Instagram been really supportive and one of the reasons why we've been able to connect with so many people when we do go out there is, is because of these guys so they invited us. Um, it was like a downstairs old school basement with its own bar, like separate from the restaurant. It was it was pretty good. Cool. Something out, something out the Godfather, and uh, and Zach came, and we had we had a little group of us, um, and it was just nice to be able to to experience that sort of joy with natives, with Leche natives here in the UK. So that 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 for me is probably, um, probably wow. my favourite moment. No pressure, Zach. <laughs> you stole mine. I, honestly, as soon, as soon as you asked the question, I was like, okay, I knew, I knew the answer. And then when you started talking, well, I was like, oh, I can't, <laughs> can't pick the same. But no, genuinely, it was. I mean, it was my first, um, it was my sort of first um, delve into Lecce. Will was sort of saying, look, come along, you know, it'd be good. Um, just football and beers at the end of the day. So it was always going to be great. Um, but just the support of all of these people and it was just amazing. We were up dancing on chairs and, you know, there was, it was, it was just brilliant. I loved every single second of it. And then probably ever since then, that's when I've got really, really into Lecce so much more. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm following them every single day now. So, and it's all because of that one, that one evening, really. Excellent. I mean, I, mine as it pertains to Lecce is unfortunately at, at the expense of Milan, which was in, I believe 2006, when Milan lost at the Ville de Mare uh, with uh, to a Vucinic goal, 
Um, I mean, at that time, I'm younger. I'm thinking, oh, Milan's going to just you know stroll through this. We'll get on to we we'll get on to focusing on Europe in the midweek or whatever, whatever was coming next and that sort of thing. And you're watching the game and you're watching them struggle and you know and then and then Vucinic scores the goal and you you just see the the, the camera panning to the fans and you that was the first time you got a real feel for that atmosphere because, you know, prior to that and not having maybe the access that, uh, that we have now, um, you just kind of looked at, you, you know, here in America, you kind of going through the city on schedule and you're looking at Lecce, you know, on the slate, you're chalking that up as a, as, a, as, as an easy three points. And the more you watch these games, the more you, that, that's when I really started to get more of an appreciation for, how hard it is to win away in this league, especially at a venue like the, uh, the, uh, uh, at Lecce. So, um, that was, that was, that, that probably be my favorite Lecce moment. It came at the expense of my favorite team. <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, thank you once again. So it was a pleasure. Again, again, the fans were screaming for you. So we had to get you guys back on, uh, please let us know where, where people on social media can find each of you. And then where you guys where can find your, uh, Lecce fan club UK. Uh, so Zach and I run the page um, and we're um, at official UK Leche um, on Instagram. Um, we try and keep it as active as possible. So not not but a full time job by any means. So we try and uh, we try and keep it active um, try and put up posts. I, I, I have a superstition where we only post on wins, um, which when you're a Leche doesn't happen all the time. So I've reduced that down to any positive result um we'll try and post um and try and keep the stories and, and things things going as well but um yeah it's at official uk lecce i will gonna vouch for you guys you guys are a great follow on instagram uh definitely put up some great memes and other another posting as well so definitely follow them uh we'll put the link in the description as well when we when we send it we'll send this video out frank uh, anything else that's all i got man that's all i got great stuff guys great always getting a chance to catch up with you guys yeah well thank you both again it's been a pleasure uh Good luck rest of the season. Hopefully we can catch up before the end of the season uh, in a positive if in a positive manner here. So for Frank, for Will, for Zach, uh, I'm Richard Carmen. We'll catch you guys soon on the next series of the podcast, Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>